actually going to use the inverse function theorem to find the derivative of g of x equals sine inverse of x. And then we're going to compare that to what's in that table to verify that it does, in fact, work well for us. So first, our inverse function, f of x, is sine x. By definition, the inverse of sine inverse is sine. f prime of x is then cosine x, as we saw not too long ago, 3.5. Now we need f prime of g of x. Okay, so that would be cosine of sine inverse of x. Hmm, we need to play around with this just a little bit. Let's draw us a triangle, a right triangle particularly. All right, we have theta posed in our, superimposed in our triangle. So we know a few things. We know that sine inverse of x is theta. That is the statement that we have. So that means that sine of theta equals x. All right, now we're going to write that as sine theta over 1 so that our hypotenuse is 1 and our opposite side is x. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean identities, this side must be square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, now, from that, we want to know what cosine of sine inverse is. Well, cosine of theta, cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. That is the square root of 1 minus x squared. But theta is sine inverse. It's a really common trig trick. So this is square root of 1 minus x squared. Which means that this over here is square root of 1 minus x squared and this leads us finally to we take the reciprocal to so, show that the derivative of sine inverse, let's put that right here, the derivative of that is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, as was stated in the theorem. Now, let's take that definition one step further and apply it. Example five, apply the chain rule to the formula derived in this example to find the derivative of h of x equals sine inverse of g of x. And then use that result to find the derivative of sine inverse of 2x cubed. Well, our chain rule would say this is going to be the derivative of one, or of sine inverse, or of g of x. So the derivative of sine inverse is, as we just found, 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, our x here is g of x. Now we multiply by the derivative of that inside function we just plugged in. So that would be the derivative of just that generic function. Now let's apply that to sine inverse of 2x cubed. That would be 1 over 1 minus x squared, square root of, of, square root of 1 minus our x here will be 2x cubed squared times the derivative of that function, which would be 6x squared. So this will be 6x squared over square root of 1 minus 4x to the sixth. All right, next, example six, find the derivative of tan inverse of x squared. All right, different function, but we can go back to our table and use that. 
the derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So just tan inverse of x, uh, derivative, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we can use the same logic here to say that f prime of x is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this will be 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth. Alright, example 7. Find the derivative of x squared times sine inverse of x. We have a product rule. We need to know what our derivative of sine inverse x is. We've used it enough, we should know it pretty well now. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that is going to be our, if we label these u and v, that is v prime, and u prime is 2x. So with our product rule, we have derivative of the first, u prime, so 2x sine inverse of x plus x squared times the derivative of sine inverse. So I'll write that as x squared over square root of 1 minus x squared. And there we have it. Example 8. The position of a particle is given by s of t equals tangent inverse of 1 over t for t greater than or equal to 1 half. Find the velocity of the particle at time equals time t equals 1. Well, we are trying to find the velocity at time 1. However, that is equal to the derivative of s, our position at 1. So we need to find the derivative of s. All right, now tangent inverse, remember that was 1 over 1 plus x squared. We have a composed function here. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of that function, that inner function, which is negative 1 over t squared. And if we distribute, we multiply that t squared around, we find that s prime of t equals negative 1 over t squared plus 1, which means that s prime of 1 is minus 1, 1 squared plus 1, which is minus 1 half. Therefore, velocity at time 1 is minus 1 half.